All right, good afternoon everybody. And so I am recording this session so it will appear on YouTube in the near future. Now I'm not going to do question 8 because as you can see the solution from question 8 is, is quite easy. So if you apply the information, highest common factor is equivalent to the GCD. So turning those two sentences into two equations, we have equation 1 and 2. And we can clearly see that um, from equation 1 that x must be a multiple of 40. And then you just keep trying multiples of 40. 40 doesn't satisfy both equations, so it's bad. 80 doesn't satisfy both equations, so it's bad because the GCD of 80 and 80 is not 40, so it doesn't satisfy 1. But if you try 120, it satisfies both equations. And so we're looking for the smallest value of x, and so the answer to this question is 120. All right, now I hope you guys are ready for action. Let's have a look at problem 7. So problem 7 is we want to find the largest positive integer n, such that n plus 8 is a factor of that. Now who can tell me um, what technique do we use to solve this question? So who can tell me how will we do this? Any takers? So n plus 8 is a polynomial of degree 1. That guy is a polynomial of degree 3. So we want to find the largest n. Good stuff Majorzi. Alright. So the trick here is polynomial division. So the trick is to do polynomial division. And so please make sure you know this when you get to university. So well done Majorzi, well done Zadvik. So the trick here is to do polynomial division. So it's just like normal division. So n cubed plus 13n squared plus 40n plus 40 goes here and we divide it by n plus 8. And then you play this game. n multiplied what gives me n cubed. So the leading term here is n, the leading term here is n cubed, and you ask yourself n times what gives me n cubed. You guys are welcome to tell me quickly in the chat. Yep, <laughs> no surprise, it's n squared. And then what I do is I multiply this whole cloud by n squared. So if I do this, I get n plus 8 times n squared becomes n cubed plus 8n squared, and then I subtract. If I subtract, I get 5n squared plus 40n plus 40. Then I play the same game. The leading term here is n. The leading term here is 5n. So n times what gives me 5n? n times what gives me 5n? Yep. No big surprise. It's 5n. And then I multiply the whole cloud with 5n. So I get 5n squared plus 40n. If I subtract, I get 40. And now I stop because of this is a lesser degree. So now I know that if I take this polynomial and I divide it by n plus 8, the quotient is n squared plus 5n and the remainder is 40 over n plus 8. So just like there are rules to play chess, there are rules to do polynomial division. And you are welcome to look this up. Maybe it's in your textbook or maybe you can find this on the internet. So the idea here is to do polynomial division. So if you do polynomial division, the quotient is n squared plus 5n and the remainder is 40. So you put 40 over n plus 8. Now, you want this to be an integer. So you want this to be an integer. Now, remember, n is an integer. So n squared plus 5, n is an integer. So this quantity is an integer, element of z. And you want this to be an integer. So thus, we want 40 over n plus 8 to be an integer. And now we want the largest possible value of n. So that 40 over n plus 8 is an integer. And who can tell me what is the largest positive factor of 40? What is the largest positive factor of 40? Obviously 40. And so the best is clearly when n plus 8 is equal to 40 or n is equal to 32. And so well done if you guys 
said the answer to this question is 32. Any questions on this solution? I think this is the quickest way to solve this question. As I said, if you have a question, you're welcome to unmute or you can type something in the chat. So the trick here is to do polynomial division and because you want this to be an integer. So how do you do polynomial division? So Takura, there are rules for polynomial division. So as I said, I am pretty sure if you Google the internet, you can find resources or some YouTube videos, all right? But the rules are very easy, all right? So let me just do one more example. So let me just do one more example. So if you have n cubed plus 2n minus 3, and you want to divide this by n minus 1. So what you want is the bottom polynomial to be of a lesser degree than the top polynomial. So the rule is that the top goes here, n cubed plus 2n minus 3. So this is the top. And then the bottom goes here. And make sure you write it from leading exponent to smallest exponent. Takura, can I get a smiley face? So n cubed goes first, then plus 2n to the power 1 minus 3. So, thank you. And then what you do is you take the leading term here, which is n, and you take the leading term here, which is n cubed. And you ask yourself, n times what gives me n cubed? Now, in this case, the answer is obviously n squared. So, then you write down n squared. And then put this whole thing in a cloud, and then you multiply the whole cloud with n squared. So, it becomes n cubed minus n squared. And now you subtract n cubed minus n cubed disappears, naught minus n cubed becomes n cubed plus 2n minus 3. Takura, can I get another smiley face that you understand what I'm doing? So the top goes there, the bottom goes there, looking at the leading coefficients, then I continue in this manner. Tamarin, you have a question? I think it should be 3n squared, not n squared. Because you have negative, negative. Uh, oh, never mind. Okay, 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 okay. So, 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 no worries, no worries. So, some people, they're quite careful. They rather keep a blank space here and they rather write it like this. So, you keep the one column for n cubed, um, the one column for n squared, the one for the ends and the constants. Can I get smiley faces that you guys are with me so far? Can I get some more smiley faces that you guys see? So as I said, uh, go to the internet. You can find plenty of resources how to do polynomial division. All right. So there are rules to divide um, integers and they you can do the same thing with polynomials. All right. And then you do the same thing here. You have an in here. That's the leading guy, and the leading guy is n squared. So n times what gives me n squared? The answer is plus n. You multiply the whole cloud with n, so it becomes n squared minus n, and you subtract. If you subtract, n squared minus n squared disappears, and that's what you want. And then you have 2n minus n, so it becomes 3n minus 3. And then you play the same game. Underline the n, underline 3n. n times what gives me 3n? n times what gives me 3n? Yeah, plus 3. And so you multiply the whole cloud with 3, so you end up getting this. So what happens in this case is when you divide this polynomial by this polynomial, the quotient, so the quotient is n squared plus n plus 3, and you put the remainder of what you divide by as that. But obviously... This just becomes 0. So we see that n cubed plus 2n minus 3 over n minus 1 is equal to n squared plus n plus 3. Or you can now see that I've chosen this polynomial so that it factorizes as n minus 1 times n squared plus n plus 3. Are there any other re questions relating to this solution? All right. So maybe there's other ways of doing this. And Takura, I know you're in grade 10, but you are welcome to search the internet and find 
more examples of polynomial division and there are problems where polynomial division comes to your rescue and especially if you come to university if you come to your university we're going to assume that you have played with polynomial division alrighty so as you can see polynomial division helped me to solve the problem that I posed to you guys and and in this case it also helped me to see that n minus 1 is a factor and it allows me to factorize this cubic polynomial so there's lots of cool things you can do with polynomial division so play with that have some fun all right I believe we have happiness so let's have a look at question 6 all right did you guys like question 6 this question 6 where we have a large heap of red blue and yellow cards and you receive points either by for each red card or twice the blue for each blue card twice the number of red cards as points and for each yellow card three times the number of blue cards as points and so we want to know what is the maximum number of points we could receive with 15 cards <laughs> all right so yes okay so how do you guys think what is a good starting point for solving this problem what is a good starting point for solving this problem anybody I like this word it starts with a a good starting point to solve this problem would be algebra all right so I would start the following I would start say we have our red cards b blue cards and y yellow cards all right so what equation must be true zarwick or chatterjee or anybody else so we employ the power of algebra we employ the power of algebra so we have an unknown number of red cards, unknown number of blue cards, and unknown number of yellow cards. All right, so quite right. And so thank you, Zadwick. Thank you, Chatterjee. So we know that red plus blue plus yellow is equal to 15. And we also know that, you know, the number of red cards will be naught or more. The number of yellow cards would be naught or more. And the number of blue cards would be naught or more. All right, can I get smiley faces that you guys are happy with this plan? So we need to bring in algebra. So we don't know how many red cards, we don't know how many blue cards, we don't know how many yellow cards we have. So we give each of those variables names. And we know that um, we have 15 cards in total. And we also know that the red cards, yellow cards and the blue cards can't be negative. So we spend some time on the setup. We spend some time on the setup. So we try to model this question. All right, and so so now let's work out the points. So let's work out the points. All right. So for each red card, we get one point. So taking this into account, so if we have our red cards, we get our points. All right. Now looking at this information, plus what is the next way of getting points? Who can tell me what goes over here? So interpreting that funny sentence, so for each red card we get one point, so that is R. So yes, Zadwick, quite right. So for each blue card, twice the number of red points. So this is going to be twice blue red. Can I get smiley faces that you guys see that this is what the problem is saying? So if you have B blue cards, each blue card gives me two R points, and then in total you have two BR points. All right, so reading is fundamental, ladies and gentlemen. Reading is fundamental, ladies and gentlemen. And now we also get points because of this sentence over here. So looking at that sentence over here, how many points do we get from that portion of the rules of this game? Yes. All right, so I am just going to simplify to 3 blue y. All right, so I'm just going to simplify this to 3 blue y. All right, 
Are there any questions? Are there any questions? So read the question and then use the appropriate algebra to say this is the information that I have and this is the point and this is now what I want to maximize. So, uh, so I want to maximize this. So I want to maximize this. All right. Now, this is not easy because we have lots of variables lurking here. All right. This is not easy. We have lots of variables lurking here. All right. But if you look at the second and the third term, they said B is here. All right. So the way that I'm going to tackle this problem is to look at cases. Look at cases. This is quite sneaky. So I'm going to look at cases. All right. Have you guys done cases at school? Like a maths problem where you have to look at cases. One no. A little bit. All right. So you don't you don't see this often at school. Um, you see this a little bit more at university. So we're going to look at cases. So I'm going to start with the easy case. So case one. If B is equal to zero, then the points will be what? So in the easy case where we use zero blue cards, then applying it in the points formula, what is the formula for points? What is the formula for points? Yep, it's R. So maximum is what? So what is the maximum in this case? So if, yep, it's 15. All right, so that is quite easy. Now let's have a look at case two. Case two, if B is equal to one, then the points becomes the following. Remember now B is one. So we get R plus two R plus three Y, which becomes three R plus three Y. And who can tell me what this is equal to? Who can tell me what this is equal to? Have a look carefully. Quite right. Guys, remember, remember, R plus B plus Y is equal to 15. Now, if B is equal to 1, then R plus Y is equal to 14. All right. Christian, do you see? In case 2, when B is equal to 1, R plus Y is equal to 14. And so 3 times R plus 14 becomes 42. All right. Are there any questions? So case 1 is if we use 0 blue cards. Then the best that we can get is 15 points. In case two, we use one blue card. Then the most points that you will get is 42. As long as you use one blue card and red plus yellow must be 14 because I have to add up to 15. Can I get smiley faces or a question? Can I get smiley faces or a question? Can I get one more smiley face? Thank you, Luke. Thank you, Jared. Thank you, Richard. Alrighty, now comes the fun part. Alright, so what do you guys think the very last case would be? So, what do you guys think? Any takers? What will be the third case? Knowing that this is the last case, what should the third case be? Um, Christian, I'm not so sure. Remember, you've got to take in all possibilities into account. So you've got to take all possibilities into account. So, so yes, Zarwick is quite right. So here, if blue is greater or equal to 2, then. Christian, can you see? Because now this takes into account that blue can be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way up to 15. Richard, can you see that this takes into account that blue can be 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up until 15? 
Christian, Richard, can you see that these three cases covers everything? So the number of blue cards have to fall in one of these three cases. The number of blue cards could be zero, or it could be one, or it could be two or more than two. All right. So remember, when you are doing cases, you've got to cover everything. All right. You cannot leave out anything into play. I, uh, there's a question. I just still need to see how you put it into an, an equation. All right. So case one and case two was easy to deal with. All right. But now looking at case two, and you can now quite see why we're doing this. So blue is greater or equal to two. All right. Now, looking at this term, 2BR and 3BY, all right, what does your gut feeling say? Which tokens do you want to have more of? So just looking at that and that. So this is the way points are being made up because this is the rules of this problem. So looking at that, which cards would you prefer to have? Zadwick is saying yellow. What does, what does everybody else think? Richard, so if you don't have power on the blue, but if you, if yeah. So obviously, because you can see, um, if you can swap a, a red card for a yellow card, potentially there's an opportunity for, to get more points. All right. So let's see this in action. All right, now let's see this in action. So we think that this is the case. So let's say if we use R, red, B, blue, and yellow, then the points that we get, let's call it P, would be R plus 2B, R plus 3B, Y. And now let's do the following, where I replace a red card with a yellow card. And let's see what the points are. Guys, can you see what I'm doing? If I have one less red card and I replace it with a yellow card. So red becomes one less and yellow becomes one more. Guys, can I get a smiley face that you guys see what am I doing here? I'm replacing a red card, so one less, and I'm making my yellow cards one more. Alright, so now let's apply it. So here we have... R minus one red cards plus twice blue. So we the red cards becomes that and three times blue, yellow plus one. And so now if we do the maths, this is R minus one plus two B R um, minus two B plus three B Y um, plus three B. And so you can see that and that simplify slightly and so we get r plus 2br plus 3by plus b minus 1 and so you can now see this quantity is p so q minus p becomes b minus 1 which is greater than 0 if b is greater or equal to 2 can I get a smiley face that you guys see? If I use RBY cards, my point score is P. If I use R minus 1 red, same blue, 1 yellow, my point score becomes Q. And Q minus P is B minus 1, which is bigger than 0 if B is 2 or more than 2. Alright, so what we learn from this calculation is the following. If B is greater or equal to 2, then swapping red for yellow increases the score. And so for maximum score, use zero red cards. Are there any questions on this logic? So we see in this case, when the number of blue cards are two or more than two, then if you replace, if you have a positive number of red cards and you replace them all for yellow cards, it increases your score. 
and so you're aiming for a maximum score so you continue doing this until you have zero red cards and you're only stuck with yellow cards or blue cards yellow or blue cards all right and so taking this into account so then with the blue cards sorry so uh, we see that with the red cards being zero um, we uh, let me spell that better um, we get score of so the score will be red is zero so this is zero this is zero so we get three by um, where blue plus yellow must add up to 15 all right and so let's see in this case so if two numbers add up to 15 so non-negative integers add up to 15 what is the maximum that 3by can be a lot of you guys got this answer all right so now there's not so many cases to check so to maximize 3 times by when will this happen so in case 3 to achieve the maximum quite right christian so so playing you will see that the best is 3 times 7 times 8 and so the answer that I was looking for in this problem was when this is equal to 168 and that is the answer there might be other ways of solving this question thank you Christian we both agree on 168 are there any questions or comments on this problem there might be other ways of solving this problem but looking at the expression, you will see that um, it might be more beneficial to have more yellow cards than red cards. So doing this little side calculation, you can see that when B is 2 or more than 2, you're guaranteed with that. And it's easy to see that the case B is 0 doesn't give you a number close to 168. And the case when B is 1 doesn't give you a number close to 168. All right. So... Always read the question carefully. Always read the question carefully. And, and if you look at the question, what they are saying is you have an infinite number of red, blue, and yellow cards, but the question never said that you had to use at least one red card, at least one blue card, and at least one yellow card. All right? So do take that into account. Oh, look, you were also caught out by this. All right? But this is, this is okay, you know? So you learn the lesson. So you don't get caught out when you write your matric exams or when you do, when you do um, university problems at university. In that case, what you can do is you can, you can solve it in both cases. You can solve it in the case where the number of cards is non-negative. And you can also solve it in the case where the number of cards, the number of red cards is at least one. Can I get smiley faces? I think it's a nice question. I think it's a nice question um, and they demonstrate that sometimes solving problems you got to use cases all right so cases is another powerful tool all right so um, you can possibly do this with calculus but you might need to know multivariable calculus to solve the Zerwick all right but obviously um, I have given you guys this problem that, that there are ways of solving it without calculus all right and looking at the way the formula for points is made up you can see clearly it, it seems to be more to your advantage to have yellow cards than red cards and this little calculation show it happens when B is greater or equal to 2 and that leads me to investigate those three cases all right any more questions or comments all right there might be other solutions and if you have a different solution you're welcome to email me and i can share it to everybody else in the class all right but yeah sometimes you just have to say all right i'm going to look at a couple of cases and let's see what i can extract from that all right i think we have happiness so let's have a look at the second last problem for the night so we have a triangle with unknown sides we have a triangle with unknown sides and I drop an altitude, I drop an altitude and I drop another altitude, all right? Um, 
what do you call the point where the altitudes meet? Who can tell me what do you call the point where the altitudes meet? So, what is the name of the point where the altitudes meet? Good stuff, Chatterjee. Good stuff, Zarwick. It is called the orthocenter. All right. It is called an orthocenter. So, let's say in this diagram, AD is 3, BE is 4, and the other side, CF is equal to 6. All right. So, when you're doing geometry problems, it's good to draw it big, draw it nicely, so that you can play with the problem. All right. Now, if you have a triangle, obviously the sides and the angles are important. But what's another important property of a triangle that you would like to know? So what is another thing that you, you get asked quite often to do with triangles? So even though this question doesn't specifically use that word, but what else is quite useful in a triangle? Congruency, maybe. Um, what is the a friend to perimeter? Takura, what is a friend to perimeter? Takura, area, yes. Area, thank you, Christian. Area is a very good friend. All right. So what I am going to do is I'm going to say CF is the biggest. So I am going to say let AB equal to 2x where x is a real number. So what is the area of triangle ABC? Who can tell me what is the area of triangle ABC? So if I decide to make AB 2x, so using algebra again, guys do not underestimate the power of algebra. Do not underestimate the power of sometimes looking cases, but now I'm going to make AB 2x. Who can tell me what the area is? All right. Be careful. Be careful. Remember, it's half base times height. So it is half AB times CF. And so AB is 2x. And so it becomes 6x units. Majorzy, do you see? Majorzy, do you see AB? Okay, good. So we know that the area is 6x. So this is good news. So I know that the distance from A to B is 2x. So that's the distance from A to B. Now using the area, who can tell me what is BC equal to? Who can tell me what BC is equal to? So we can calculate the triangle, the area of the triangle in three separate ways. So, using appropriate bases and heights, using appropriate bases and heights. Who can, do you guys agree with Christian and Chatterjee? Do you guys agree with Christian and Chatterjee? Double check the maths. Yep, thank you, Majorzy. All right. So, we see that BC, that's going to be 4X. And one last time, who can tell me what... The distance from A to C is. So working out the area of the triangle as base AC times height BE. So yep, that becomes 3x. Alright, so let's summarize what we have. So we know that the area is 6x units squared. And we know that the sides are... 2x, 3x, 4x. So the perimeter would be 2x plus 3x plus 4x, which is 9x. All right. So the trick in this question is to consider area. And if I make this the distance from A to B 2x, I get to work out the other three sides quite easily. All right. But we are not done yet. This is an Olympiad problem. So we need to do something extra and who can tell me what is the another key step or the key idea to help us to find x well done majorzy all right remember if you have the sides of a triangle you can work out the area all right 
Sarwick, you're quite right. This is definitely Heron's Formula vibes. All right, this is what you're going to do, need. All right, so Heron's Formula says the following. So Heron's Formula says the following. A triangle with sides A, B, C has area um, equal to the square root of S, S minus A, S minus B, S minus C, where S is equal to the semi-perimeter. Are there any questions? I'm sure if you've been doing Olympiads from grade 8, you would have encountered Heron's formula. So if you have a triangle with sides A, B, C, then an alternative to working out the area is to do the root of S times S minus A, S minus B, S minus C, where S is the semi-perimeter. So you add up the three sides and you divide it by 2. All right. Okay, so... One way that you can obviously do this is say, okay, this is a triangle with sides 2, 3, 4. And this is a triangle with sides 2x, 3x, 4x. All right. And if you use Heron's formula, this area is, I'm going to leave it for you to verify. If you apply Heron's formula, so please do this later tonight. So if you apply Heron's formula, this is root 135 over 4. All right, these two triangles are what? So out of interest, they are, what's the key word? Yes, G, they are similar. So all that I did, thank you, Majorzi, to go from this triangle to this triangle, I blow up each side by x. So this area is root 135 over 4 times x squared because the base gets x times more and the height gets x times more all right or you can apply heron's formula straight to the sides 2x 3x 4x are there any questions so if you if you want to avoid doing lots of algebra work out the area of the triangle with sides 2 3 4 using heron's formula which is root 135 over 4 and then uh, you just form a similar triangle by multiplying each side by x. And so that means that the area gets multiplied by x squared. Can I get smiley faces that you guys follow this logic? Alright, so these two triangles are similar. And so you know that to go from the area from the one on the left to the area on the one on the right, you multiply by x squared. Alright, and now we are happy because... Now we know that the area is equal to 6x, but it's also equal to the square root of 135 over 4 times x squared. So x is positive, which gives, if you do the maths, it's not pretty. So it gives that x is 24 over the square root of 135. So Christian, I don't know if, if there's a much shorter root. All right, there might be other ways of doing this, all right, but it's really not that difficult, all right. And so now we can say the perimeter is 9 times x, so it's 9 times 24 over the square root of 135. So the perimeter is that, and then the question was asking to work out 15 times p squared, and if you do the maths, I get the answer of 5184. Are there any questions? So please double check my maths. So oh, double check my maths. Uh, but the key idea is to play with areas. All right. You can work out the area as half base times height or using Heron's formula. And from that, there's plenty of information to work out what x is. And so the perimeter is 9 times x. And then working out 15 times b squared, you get an answer which is an integer. And this is the answer that I was looking for. All right, any questions? Are you guys happy with this one? Smiley faces? Questions? Smiley faces? Comments? Anybody? All good, Dr. Wiggins. Thank you. Excellent. Dr. Wiggins, yeah? Could you just let my brother in? Oh! Apparently it says he can't. 
Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> thank you for that. He's admitted. Great. Thank you. Pleasure. Okay, great. So, as promised, let's look at the question that stumped everybody. This question stumped everybody. Nobody could solve this question. All right. So this is how the question goes. Find the only 11 digit number such that it starts with a one. When it is written twice in a row, it is a perfect square. So this question stumped everybody. All right. So let's try to solve this question. All right. So the key thing is to look at this information, all right? Well, okay, let's start with the following. Um, let's call this number N, okay? So let's call this number capital N. So let this unknown number be capital N, all right? Because it's an 11-digit number, what is the smallest 11-digit integer? Who can tell me what is the smallest 11-digit integer? Please use power notation. Any takers? Christian, Dwayne, Edward, Iloko, Jared, Lori, Luke, Majosi, Richard, Robert, Sharik, Takura. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's take it let's take it slow. What is the smallest two digit number? What's the smallest two-digit number? That's 10. What's the smallest three-digit number? What's the smallest three-digit number? It's 100. All right, so what is the smallest 11-digit number? So what is the smallest 11-digit number? Yes, it's 10 to the 10. All right, do you guys see how, 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 how sneaky this was? Can I get smiley faces that you guys see that the smallest 10 digit number is 10 to the power 10. All right, because it starts with one, we know it's going to be less than two times 10 to the 10. All right, and n is a positive integer. All right, are there any questions on what I've done so far? All right, so remember you had two weeks to tackle this question. So this should have been your first line. You know that n is a positive integer and it's got to be in that interval. All right, getting that spot on is important. All right, now we got to play with this thing, writing something twice in a row. All right, so if you take a three and you write it twice in a row, what do we multiply by? So if you take the number 3 and you write it twice by row, we multiply by what? So if you worry you're going to mess up the maths, take examples. Guys, if you're going to worry you're going to mess up things, take an example. So let's take 24. So if we take this two-digit number and we repeat it, what do we multiply by? So this is taking a one-digit number, repeating it, a two-digit number, repeating it. So if we take a two-digit number, like 24, yeah. Okay, let's do a three-digit number, so 7, 8, 9. So, and if we repeat it, to go from the first guy to the second guy, we multiply by what? Do you guys agree with Majosi and, and Basona, Chachaji and Iloko? Can I get one more response? Thank you, Richard. All right. So what do you guys think if we do now an 11-digit number and we repeat it, by what do we multiply here? Who can tell me what is the formula that you multiply over here? So the factor that it gets bigger. So again, now you have to use power notation. Christian is saying 10 to the 10 plus 1. Majosi is saying 10 to the 10 plus 1. All right. Guys, 
11 is that 10 plus 1, right? 101 is 10 to the power what plus 1? 2, 1. 1001 is 10 to the power? 1001 is 10 to the power? 3 plus 1. Ah, you guys are now seeing. So this is meant to be 10 to the power 11 plus 1. Because you guys can see that 1 is that exponent. If that's a 2, it becomes that exponent. If this is a 3, it becomes this exponent. And if this is an 11, this must be an 11. Can I get smiley faces that you guys see this pattern? Alright, so sometimes you've got to make sure, alright, there's a difference between having the exponent 10 and 11, alright. So you need to make sure that you have the pattern spot on. So if you repeat a one digit number, you multiply by 10 to the 1 plus 1. If you repeat a two digit number, it's 10 to the 2 plus 1 times more. If you repeat a 3 digit number, it's 10 to the 3 plus 1. So if you repeat an 11 digit number, it's 10 to the 11 plus 1. Alright. Are there any questions or comments? So in this question, you got to make sure that you observe the correct patterns. Is it all good? If you have a working microphone, you can unmute and tell me it's all good. If you have a question in the chat, you can tell me. Alrighty. Now, looking at this, you can clearly see it's to your benefit to factorize 10 to the 11 plus 1. So if you factorize 10 to the 11 plus 1, it turns out to be 11 squared times 23, which is prime, times 4093, which is prime, times 8779, which is prime. All right. So on the corner in the right hand side, I have 10 to the power 11 plus 1 prime factorized. All right. So do take note, I have it prime factorized. All right. So that is going to be important. All right, so um, if you repeat the number, so the number's written twice in a row, let's call the number in. Um, it's going to be this, 10 to the 11 plus 1. All right, and we know that from this we can see um, this guy, 10 to the 11 plus 1, has a factor of 11 squared. Um, times d and this is d so this is d all right so let d be 23 times 4093 times 8779 all right that is going to be d all right and now we know that this is a perfect square we know that this is a perfect square so if we prime factorize we know that this has to be of the following format it has to be of the format of 11 times d times t squared for some integer t. Alright, so you can see that m has got to be a perfect square, so it's got to be an integer squared. And I know that that integer should be a multiple of 11, and it will contain a, some power, some multiple of 23, uh, some multiple of 4093 and some multiple of 879. So it's going to be 11 times d times t for some integer t. All right. And so if we quickly compare this, this means that n times 11 squared times d, that's got to equal to 11 squared times d squared times t squared. So dividing by 11 squared, this disappears. And dividing by d, so dividing by d, I get n is equal to d squared, sorry, a d on the left and a d on the right disappears, so n is d times t squared. Are there any questions on the algebra? So if I repeat n twice, it's going to be n times the factor 10 to the 11 plus 1, 
and we know it's going to be a perfect square so it's going to be a multiple of 11 and a multiple of d squared times a multiple of t squared so prime factorizing it and so because they equal you get n is d times t squared where t is an unknown integer all right and this is now where you're going to have fun so n is going to be d d we already established at the top is this guy at the top it's that so if you rewrite it d will be 10 to the power 11 plus 1 over 121 so 10 to the 11 plus 1 factorizes as 11 squared times d and so d is 10 to the 11 plus 1 over 21 so this is going to be 10 to the 11 plus 1 over 121 so that's d times t squared and now we're going to fill in the fact that we want n to be between remember it's an 11 digit number so it's got to be between 10 to the 10 and 2 times 10 to the 10 so we have 10 to the 10 is less or equal to um, 10 to the 11 plus 1 over 121 times t squared which is less than 2 times 10 to the 10 now if you're dealing with big numbers you can ignore the plus 1 so this is roughly um, 10 to the 10 less or equal to 10 to the 11 over 121 times t squared less than 2 times 10 to the 10 and now looking at that what do you guys think we're going to divide by so looking at this e expression if you don't have a calculator but these numbers are quite big what are we going to divide by 10 to the 10 10 to the 11 10 to the 10 yep we're going to divide by 10 to the 10 so if we divide by 10 to the 10 we get 1 is less or equal to 10 over 121 times t squared which is less than um, 2 and so if we multiply both 121 so we get 121 is less or equal to 10 squared which is less than 2 for 2 all right and so um, t equal to 1 doesn't work t equal to 2 doesn't work what is the only integer that works so 1 doesn't work 2 doesn't work t has got to be a positive integer takura if t is 0 the middle is 10 times 0 squared which is not great all right so yes t is equal to 4 works right well done majorzi well done chatterji all right and so now we are happy now we can say the magic integer the problem that stumped everybody the answer is capital n is 10 to the power of 11 plus 1 over 121 times t squared which is times 16 and if you do the maths it's 13223140496 so this is 12345671234567891011 so this is the 11 digit number that starts with a 1 and if you repeat it twice in a row it becomes a perfect square and that is the answer to this problem that stumped everybody